So today's goal is to finish up all of the heads. Notably that they're all made out of petted lines currently, and I wanted to get those to another layer and add in some cleanup lines. That way when I actually go and do my in-betweening, I have these nice solid lines to work with. Because trying to in-between with petted lines, which I remember back in the previous exercises that I had to do, ended up being a real pain in the keister. So I briefly touched on this on the last video that I wasn't really satisfied with the way that these heads turned out. I thought that they were too long and that they were differently shaped. But it turns out that I didn't need to worry about that because after checking the onion skins, the head shapes were perfectly fine. Which is great because now I get to move over to the other aspect of the head that I wanted to touch on, which is the mouth. And I found a couple of references, as you can see here, where there's mouths that are open, mouths that have lips, mouths that have teeth. There's a million ways that you can go about doing this. Almost the manila folders manila universe. All I had to do was figure out the one that worked for me. And I, I don't know, I, I guess I did? I ended up just making lines. Like I tried all of these different combinations. I even have a whole practice book of mouths that I had tried to see if there was one that would work out for me. But at the end of the day, I just figured that making a line to imply that there's, you know, a neutral expression and then a, a kind of a, a frowning expression that seemed to work for the first two frames. However, I need a little bit more personality for the last one, which is the smile. And that ended up just getting solved by trying a bunch of wiggly lines until I got one that ended up looking kind of like a smile. Really, it was just like ha completely haphazard. See you with that out of the way. I can now start going and adding in a bit of the other facially oriented accessories. I debated which of these accessories that I actually wanted to do between the ears and the hair. And I figured that honestly, ears, if they're not on a character, is going to be really, really jarring. And usually if a character doesn't have ears and that requires some sort of like story or justification or something. But a character without hair is otherwise pretty understandable, especially with an exercise as rudimentary as this one. So I opted to avoid hair. And that has absolutely nothing to do with the fact that I have no idea how to draw hair and everything to do with the fact that I needed to get, do something. So I'll just stick with the ears and pretend like that was my plan the whole time. And with that all out of the way, now we get to begin the fun part, which is cleanup. Which you'll notice we're doing a little bit differently this time. Before, with the petted lines in the past exercises, we just accepted the fact that that's what it was going to look like and moved on. Then when we got to the flower sack, we had all of our lines where we, we weren't petting them. We were confident with them in single swishes. So our cleanup was mostly just carving away at the edges and the excess until we were able to finalize a flower sack image that we liked. Today, we're actually combining both of those. We're gonna have the bottom layer, which is all of the petted lines, and then a top new layer that I've created, which is the cleanup. So that way I can use the petted lines to guide all of my cleanup lines. So that way the final product can be those confident single switches which make up higher quality animation product. Right about here it was revealed to me that the shape of the head, which I originally thought was off and then thought that it was okay, it actually turned out that it was off. And that all got lost in translation with all of the many, 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 many lines from the petted lines. But now that I'm using nice, crisp, clean cleanup lines, I could really see the shape of the head and further adjust it and perfect it accordingly to the vision that I was looking for. And now that on this frame I've gotten past the petted line layer and I've moved on to the cleanup layer, I can take all of those swishes and start molding them into the actual frame that I want it to be. Again, compounding all of the lessons that we've learned and applying all of them for the benefit of the frame in question. Which is really nice because now I kind of have that muscle memory of which are the parts of the lines that I actually want to erase. I'm not looking around staring at it going, hmm. Do I want to erase this whole line? Do I want to just erase a section of it? Do I just want to carve away at the sides of it? No, no, no. I intrinsically take care of most of all of that when I'm making the lines. I just swish and swish and swash until I get a line that I like. And then 
when I go back, I can say, all right, the only thing that I have to do is cut off the excess, round off the edges, etc. On a side note, I didn't expect cleanup to be this therapeutic. I mean, just sitting down, listening to good music, all of the work has already been done for me with all of the petting, so I don't even have to take any time really doing any thinking. I can just sit back, take the frames I've already made, and just enjoy the nice therapeutic swish, swish, swish of the pen until I eventually get a line right. But sometimes you get to have these really nice moments where you totally nail it on the first try, like, yes, I don't suck. It's a really soothing and productive way of passing the time. I highly recommend it. Great! Now before I get into the meat of timing, there was a little tidbit that I wanted to add in to help tell the story because I was thinking about what exactly it is this character is doing, sitting there and then looking out in the distance, and then noticing something and then being happy. So I figured a good way to introduce this would be to add in a blink. It's really a very minor addition and a very simple frame to draw out, but what it implies is that it's a real, breathing, living character standing there looking out into the distance instead of just a static frame that then spontaneously decides to start moving. And then suddenly from there I got the idea to take the blink that much further. I was staring at myself in the mirror and blinking and squinting and turning my head and I realized oh well it would be pretty cool if he blinked and then in the middle of his second blink that was when he leaned forward to open his eyes kind of like a blink blink what what what, what is that? Which ended up working out in favor with a goal that I had originally, which is I wanted to start getting better at doing smoother animations where more than one thing is moving at a time, but also each of these things are moving at different paces, which is something I'll get into more in the next exercise. For now, you'll notice here that I spent the majority of my time with these two frames here in the center, the really long ones, the first of which being the eyes squinting, and the second one being the eyes open. And it took so long to figure these out because originally I thought that this was going to be a very quick transition from the eyes closed to squinting to open to pleasant surprise, just a couple of frames in between, when actually it really begged to be a moment that was held, as this character takes a moment to really acknowledge whatever this thing off in the distance that is getting him so excited is and then react accordingly. So the nice thing about doing the actual timing charge for this is that they were all just even halves. There's nothing special that I've designed or intended with this animation to practice favoring or to have a really really slow ease in or fast ease out or whatever you want to or whatever it is that one would want to do. That's not the focus here. So my timing charts were mostly just put in on a technicality because I ought to do them and that's just more muscle memory to develop. And finally, from here I found myself with a really interesting scheduling problem? Planning problem? Yeah, planning problem that I had to solve because this is my first time that I'm ever using this many layers to make an animation. So with my in-betweens, I definitely wanted to have the hard cleanup lines because I knew that those single solid strokes would make it easier to figure out where the halfway points are between any given frame or any given line with any given frame. However, I had absolutely zero faith in my ability to just hop into the cleanup layer and just start swishing away at the in-between lines, figuring that eventually I'll just get it right. Because I've made so many in-betweens before that just ended up looking like conjunction congenial blah, 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 messes right 
where I thought that, oh, I just take all of these lines and stick them at the halfway points, and then when I go back and look at the frame, it'll look like something, when really sometimes that can be a big trap, and your in-betweens can look like absolute abominations. Instead, I opted to go back to my sketching layer and slowly and meticulously sketch away, again, still following the same logic that each line and each reference point should be halfway between either sides of the onion skin, but then when I do that, I can look at the sketches, then isolate them by getting rid of the onion skins, seeing whether or not it does in fact look like a face, and then once I'm happy with the sketches, go to the above cleanup layer and now do my nice inking lines, my nice clean one-shot swishes. Once I have the confidence knowing that the frame that I'm drawing over is in fact a very decent looking in-between. Well, it turns out, doing it that way makes some pretty decent tweens indeed. God, that's creepy when I say it like that. Weird voices notwithstanding, it turned out that that was actually a really successful strategy. I went back and looked at my sketch, and really from the get-go, the sketch looked like a face. So I didn't have to worry at all about having to mesh and rearrange anything the way that I had been slightly concerned I was going to need to do, and instead could just skip right over to the cleanup and inking, swish a face into existence, and then move straight on over to the next frame. So, on that note, please enjoy the rest of the cleanup and enjoy the nice jukebox music, and in a couple of minutes when we finish up, we'll take a look at everything that we've made so far, and see what are the last steps that we need to do in order to finish off this exercise and the next video! Oh! And there you have it! So, let's see what we're working with here. I isolated this so that way we would only be looking at this one section that I actually finished all of the in-betweens for. So, looking here at what we actually have accomplished, I gotta say that the smooth movement is, is pretty solid, although it's all very, very jarring. Crow, how can something be jarring and smooth? Well, the actual transformation of the face to the tilt and the eyebrows moving in, the blink with the eyes being closed, all of those individual movements are nice and smooth. However, the actual head lean forward just appears to suddenly start and then suddenly stop. There really isn't any easing in or easing out of that motion. 
And that's just not how people are when they move their head. I mean, it's understandable that you could see and ease in or an ease out when you're moving your arm. You know, a much larger appendage that really is at the mercy of momentum. But even something as small as a head movement, again, your body works into something and then works out. However, here, it's all very sudden. So I think the only way to remedy that would be either to add in an extra frame on either end, or to have made these tweens favors in some capacity if I didn't want it to take that long in order to do. Other than that, I think I'm in a really good spot with this one here, and next time around we should be able to finish this up by doing the in-betweens for the last two sections there. And you know what? I think I will do some favoring for that other one. The other transition there looks like it has three frames, and I don't lose anything by trying favoring, so that way I can have a cross-comparison between the two. So, with that, thank you all very much, and have yourselves a wonderful however long. Thanks a bunch for sticking around to the end of the video. I myself am not one for analytics, but the people who are say it helps a bunch. So here's a bunch of love for you as a well-earned reward. And while you're here, feel free to subscribe if you like to be kept up to date on new episodes. And this week, I honestly, I gotta toss a shout out to Pinterest for all the wonderful reference images.